guys. Uh, I'm going to be giving a talk about NN dimethyltryptamine. Um, I'm going to go over a few methods, um, sources, receptors, and action, I guess, focusing mainly um, on the cellular and molecular level um, when it comes to the action. Right, thank you. Anyways, I'll, come, I'll start. Uh, so, dimethyltryptamine is a tryptamine, uh, which is very, it's a sort of a class of neurotransmitters based around the tryptophan molecule. Um, its melting point is 44.6 degrees Celsius, and its boiling point is 60 or 80. So keep those in mind if you're ever in possession of the stuff. Those are important for not ruining the substance. Um, sources, there's a couple sources. Endogenous sources, endogenous pathways within us. Human beings have capabilities, uh, which I'll outline, to produce this stuff. Uh, there's been some uh, sort of theories and whatnot that this molecule might be responsible for things uh, like dream states and uh, near-death experiences and this sort of thing. They're all very hard to test scientifically and have not been proven conclusively. Um, but then there's also vegetable sources, uh, which many of the, uh, if you have a preparation, it'll be from a vegetable source rather than homogenized people. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, it, this is tryptophan up top. It's an amino acid. It's, got, it's just like a protein, it's structural. It's used as, an, as a hormone in plants and the like. Um, Below here is serotonin. It's one of the major uh, tryptamine neurotransmitters in the body. Uh, it regulates things like wakefulness um, and acts upon a lot of the same receptors that NN dimethyltryptamine does. Um, it varies, or it differs, in that it does not have that hydroxyl group at the 5 position, and it's dimethylated at the amine. So if you, if you think of this as the base, this indole group is the base, the amine group is swinging around, uh, making it a monoamine, and a lot of neurotransmitters are monoamines. So they have this, this amine group swinging around, and then a base um, of either, in this case, indole, this double ring structure, or in things like norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, um, just a single ring structure. Um, and over here is uh, bufotinin. Um, it, it's in the, found in the skin of some toads. Very similar in structure to NN dimethyltryptamine. It's sort of a hybrid between serotonin and NN dimethyltryptamine. And that serotonin is 5 hydroxytryptamine because the hydroxy group at the 5 position. And this is 5 hydroxy dimethyltryptamine. Um, so they're similar compounds. Uh, basically, when the, within the body, you have you start with your tryptophan, and then you cleave off uh, the carboxy group, and that lead, that's uh, basically carbon dioxide um, using this enzyme, aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase, and then it goes through two methylations um, through indole, ethylamine, and methyl transferase, and that's a common uh, methyl donor. This guy, they've actually crystallized uh, the decarboxylase. Uh, it's, it goes by a couple different names, and it's used um, for a variety of uh, different neurotransmitters, um, including uh, decarboxylating DOPA into dopamine, um, and 5-hydroxytryptophan. Um, you can buy 5-hydroxytryptophan in health food stores or whatnot, and that's an inactive form. It's not neuroactive. Um, but your body will cleave off the carboxylic acid and turn it into serotonin um, for you. And there's cofactors, a whole bunch of things that you probably don't care about unless you're a chemist, like the PDP numbers. Um, this is indole ethylamine and methyltransferase. Again, uh, recently cloned, I guess, or in the 90s or whatever. But a key, a key step to sort of proving that we can produce this stuff within our own bodies. Um, so once we have this in our bodies, 
Um, how do we, we have to get rid of it, because if it accumulates, it'll just keep acting upon us. Um, one thing about, about the sort of short-lived experience of the smokable version of DMT um, is that we have systems within us to quickly get rid of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's oxidized by monoamine oxidase A, uh, where they just, they'll just cleave off the amine group and replace it uh, with an aldehyde group, making it inactive as a neurotransmitter because the monoamines are very important. Um, so monooxidase A is express, expressed throughout the gastrointestinal tract uh, because serotonin is a huge, uh, it's a vasodilator, or a vasoconstrictor, and it's found in large concentrations in the digestive system. It's very sort of primordial that way, in that the digestive system is very primordial, more primordial than the nervous system. Um, it's also found in the central nervous system and the placenta. It's very important to keep growing fetuses away from large amounts of neurotransmitters because it will distort them immensely. Uh, Monoamine oxidase B uh, mainly takes care of dopamine and uh, some other phenethylamines like uh, epinephrine and amphetamines. And that's monoamine oxidase A. Uh, so there's a lot of plant sources. Uh, it's popularized in South America as uh, for ritualistic uses in medicines. Uh, it's some plants containing it have been used as topical treatments for burns, um, for restorative properties, um, and the tryptophan-like molecules are used as hormones to differentiate between uh, tissue types and. Uh, the indole group, or the tryptamine group, actually interacts with light very well. Um, so it's sort of a light sensor for the plants, helping them move towards the light. <clears throat> and so that sway back and forth during the day as the, as the plant follows the light, that's going to be um, most likely some sort of tryptamine-like compound directing it. Uh, now I'll go quickly over uh, snuffs and ayahuasca. These are two sort of more traditional ways of taking DMT uh, from vegetable sources. So snuffs, if you haven't heard of them, is basically a finely ground, uh, pulverized plant material. It's popularized in Western culture <coughs> in the 18th century in the form of tobacco. Um, still, you know, if you get away from the cities and into, I don't know where, but there's a few eccentrics that still like to snuff their tobacco. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. There's a lot of vegetable material still in the snuff that'll ruin your sinuses. Even though the sinuses are a good place, they quickly absorb things. There's not a lot of monoamine oxidase there, so you're not going to deactivate uh, the DMT. Um, but this is why people people snort things, right? They snort uh, cocaine or various other things um, because it's fast acting. It's absorbed right into the blood through the mucous membranes of your nasal passages. But yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend snuffs because of the vegetable material. Purify your sources. Uh, ayahuasca is a decoction made from two or more plants, uh, requiring one to have some sort of DMT content. Um, it'll probably also have a lot of other similar tryptamines that the plant will be using. Um, which will have their own effects, and the whole mix is very hard to judge, or hard to be uh, very critical and analytical about, because it varies so much from source to source. Um, and also a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, because when you're taking ayahuasca, you're taking it through the gastrointestinal tract, and from before we know that the monoamine oxidase A are throughout the gastrointestinal tract and will deactivate your DMT because you do not want to be eating your lunch and suddenly trip out because your lunch accidentally contains some sort of uh, neurotransmitter mimicking compound. So, uh, these are just some other names. So, uh, this is a very weak fire there. It's brewed over slow heat uh, because, remember before, the DMT er, boils away at around 60 or 80 degrees, very low temperatures. 
Uh, these are just some plants. <coughs> They're sort of DMT content. We're almost getting up to 1% plant material as DMT. Uh, the MAOIs. So common MAOIs uh, from whatever sources, South American sources, Spanish stereopsis capi, uh, and that's use the stem and the bark of that, and again splinter it, pulverize it, um, and make a tea from that. Um, and then Syrian rue is a plant from the Middle East, and there's a very high concentration of uh, MAOI contents in the seeds. Um, there's actually some people uh, who have eaten the seeds and died because there's such a high concentration. Um, MAOIs you have to be very careful with because uh, there's lots of complications that can go wrong because you're messing with your digestive system. Uh, oftentimes, or sorry, I'll get into that a little, a little later. I just wanted to point out uh, this glowing corner here, harmalin is the MAOI found in, uh, it's common in these plants. It's a reversible MAOI, um, so it's not gonna bind irreversibly and destroy your enzymes, um, which some early pharmaceutical MAOIs did. Uh, it binds competitively. Anyways, it absorbs light at the ultraviolet frequencies, and if you are ever in ultraviolet, or like black lights while you're doing this stuff, it'll be glowing everywhere. Um, so, people who take MAOIs for their diet uh, usually have to adhere to a strict, strict restrictions um, in that these are just some free amino acids and in the body they get transformed into those uh, like neuroactive or like signaling molecules. So basically when you're on MAOIs, like a traditional way of ayahuasca usually involves like maybe a three-day fast or um, some extended period of time without food because um, of these complications. But you, you definitely want to avoid things uh, with biogenic amines. <coughs> so a lot of these things are fermented foods, spoiled foods, very ripe foods, anything with uh, microbial content um, is, is not good because uh, tryptophan, we can't make, mammals can't make it, um, only plants and microorganisms. So if you have anything like lunch meats, uh, you're going to have microorganisms growing on there and producing all sorts of biogenic amines. Um, and that's not good because it'll mess with your system. Uh, yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a lot of concern, a lot of talk about tyramine. Um, it's a big problem. Uh, so traditionally, yeah, you just, again, take your plant products, whatever they happen to be, grind them up, do a hot water extraction uh, under 50 degrees Celsius for 8 to 12 hours, um, and ingest. So this process is a slower absorption uh, than the smokable or the nasal. Uh, ingestion uh, because because yeah it takes a long time it's more natural uh, but the digestive system takes a long time it's going to be it's going to go through uh, your liver before it enters your bloodstream uh, and the effects yeah may last three to six hours so like a lot of things if you take it orally it's going to be digested for slower it's going to come the, it's going to come on slower um, and it's going to last longer. Uh, this is a couple pictures of what the internet told me DMT looks like crystallized. Um, and again, if you're smoking it, you'll probably be smoking the crystal. Um, and the effects, because you're taking it right into the lungs, um, or sorry, right into the bloodstream from the lungs, uh, the effects are very fast and short-lived. Um, because your body, again, has those mechanisms in place to deal with the compound. Um, so receptors. Now, NN-dimethyltryptamine is a pretty uh, promiscuous, promiscuous molecule.